Hi students welcome back to our channel EBC I am Talib an economic teacher today we will try to get more information about the government budget if you ever happen to observe any of your parents who are responsible for managing all the finances related matters you would have noticed that all their economic decisions and activities are based on their budget so the budget here is nothing but the sum total of all the expenses and income every individual can have a different budget in accordance with their incomes and expenses in a similar fashion the government has to run a nation and require finance to support all the development and economic activities according to article 312 of the indian constitution mention in detail the procedure and process of the annual financial statement that is budget of india now we will try to know the meaning of government budget as everyone know in the modern world every government aims at maximizing the welfare of its country it require a number of infrastructural economic and welfare activities all these activities require huge expenditure to be incurred and it support with the help of different revenues and it required appropriate planning and policies of the government to solve all these problem the government need to have a proper budget as we know the government budget is an annual statement showing item wise estimates of receipts and expenditure during a financial year the receipts and expenditure shown in the budget are not the actual figure but the estimated values for the coming fin financial year here financial year is taken from 1st april to 31st march every year there are key facts about government budget as the budget is prepared by the government at all level at central government state government and local government they prepare their respective annual budget but our discussion will be rest to the union budget under union budget there are estimated expenditure and receipts which are considered to be planned expenditure it's prepared by the government as per their objective in india budget is presented in the parliament on such a day as the president may direct by convention finance minister present the annual budget of the government on the first day of february each year it is required to be approved by the parliament before it can be implemented the budget shows the financial performance of the government in the last year and the financial policies for the upcoming financial year now we will go through the objectives of government budget government prepared the budget to fulfill certain objectives these objectives are the direct result of government economic social and political policies the detailed objectives of the government budget are as follows first one is reallocation of resources through the budgetary policy the government target to reallocate resources as per the economic that is profit maximization and also providing public welfare which considered to be the priorities of every government next we have reducing inequalities in income and wealth through this the government aims to influence distribution of income by imposing taxes on the richer and spending more on the welfare of the poor therefore it will reduce income of the rich and increase the standard of living of the poor through this it will reduce inequalities in the distribution of income next objective is economic stability it means the absence of large scale fluctuation in prices such fluctuation create uncertainty uncertainties in the economy government can exercise control over these fluctuation through taxes and expenditure next we have 
management of public enterprises there are large number of public enterprises we also known as psus which are established and managed solely for the welfare of the public budget is prepared with the objective of making various provision for managing such enterprises and providing them financial help the next objective of government budget is economic growth it refers to a sustainable increase in the real gross domestic product of economy that is increase in the volume of goods and services produced in an economy next we have decreasing regional inequalities the government budget targets to reduce regional disparities through its taxation and expenditure policies for encouraging setting up of production units in economically backward region next we have the component of budget which categorized into two categories first one is budget receipts other one is budget expenditures we will go through each of them in detail budget receipt refer to the estimated money receipts of the government from all the sources during a fiscal year basically they are of two types first one is revenue receipts other one is capital receipts we will go through further and try to know what is revenue receipts it is basically the sources of income which support the main component of budget it refer to those receipts which neither create any liability or cause any reduction in the assets of the government they are regular and reoccurring in nature and government receive them in in its normal course of activities they are like further being classified into two sources first one is tax revenue other one is non tax revenue tax revenue refers to the sum total of income from taxes and other duties imposed by the government it is compulsory payment made by the people and companies to the government without reference to any direct benefit in return it means they are of two aspect of taxes first one is taxes is compulsory payment no one can refuse to pay it another one is tax receipts are spent by the government for the common benefit of the people in the country a tax payer cannot expect that the tax amount will be used for his direct benefit further tax revenue can be classified as follows first one is direct tax another one is indirect tax we will go through the direct taxes basically they are the taxes that are imposed on property and income of the individual and companies and their burden cannot be shifted to other person or any entity they are imposed on individuals and companies and their monetary benefit is borne by those on whom they are levied they are directly affect the income level and purchasing power of people and help to change the level of aggregate demand in the economy these taxes are commonly known as income tax corporate tax interest tax capital gain tax etc next is indirect taxes indirect taxes are those taxes which can be shifted to another person or any entity their monetary burden is ultimately borne by the final user of goods and services rather than the person on whom the tax is levied these taxes are imposed on goods and services the major taxes under this are gst that is goods and service tax basic custom duty central excise vat on petroleum products excise on liquor electricity duties stamp duties security transactions tax property tax entry taxes and toll etc another part of revenue receipts is non tax revenue it refer to receipts of the government from all sources other than those of tax receipts they are main sources under this 
First one is interest. The government receive interest on loans given by it to the state government, union territories, private enterprises, and general public. Interest received from these loans is important source for the government of non-tax nature. Second one is profit and dividends. The government earn profit through public sector enterprises like Indian Railways, LIC, Bail, ONGC, BSNL, etc. It earn profit from the sales proceeds of the products of such public enterprises. Another one is fees. It refers to charges imposed by the government to cover the cost of recurring services provided by it, like court fees, registration fees, import fees, etc. Fourth one is license fees. It's another source of non-tax nature. It is a payment charged by the government to grant permission for something. For example, license fees paid for permission of keeping a gun or to obtain national permit for commercial vehicles. Next we have fines and penalties. This is another important source of revenue for the government. It refers to those payments which are imposed on breaking the law. For example, fine for jumping red light or penalty for non-payment of taxes. Next is gifts and grants. Government receive gifts and grants from foreign governments and international organizations. Such gifts are not fixed in nature, although they come and received by the government during national crises such as war, flood or pandemic. The next major head under budget receipts that is capital receipts. It refers to those receipts which either create a liability or cause a reduction in the assets of the government. They are non-recurring and non-routine in nature. The, the main sources of capital receipts which are broadly classified into three groups. First one is borrowings. The borrowing are the funds raised by the government to fulfill excess expenditures. Mainly, the government borrow funds from Reserve Bank of India, open market operation, foreign governments like loans from USA, England, etc. Another one is recovery of loans. Government grant various loans to state government or union territories. Recovery of such loans is a capital receipts and it reduces the assets of the government. The third one is considered as other receipts, which basically include disinvestment and small savings. This investment referred to the act of selling a part or the full shares of selected public sector undertakings. They termed as capital assets as they reduce the asset of the government. Another one is small savings. It referred to funds raised from the public in the form of post office, deposits, national savings certificates, Kisan Vikaspath, etc. They are treated as capital assets as they lead to an increase in the liability. So far students, we have learned about the expected earnings of the government in the form of capital and revenue. Here on, we will try to know more about and get the knowledge of the expected expenditure of the government in the component of the budget. Expected expenditure refer to the estimated expenditure of the government during a, a financial year. It broadly categorized into two categories. First one is revenue expenditure. Other one is capital expenditure. We will go through the each of them in detail. Revenue expenditure refer to the expenditure which neither create any asset nor causes reduction in any liability of the government. It is recurring in nature 
it is incurred on normal functioning of the government and the provisions for various services for example payment of salaries pensions interest expenditure on administrative services defense services health services or providing grants to different states etc next is the capital expenditure capital expenditure referred to the expenditure which either create an asset or causes a reduction in the liabilities of the government it is non recurring in nature it basically add to the capital stock of the economy and increase its productivity through expenditure on long period development programs like building metros flyover or different infrastructural projects dear students that's all for the day i hope you have learned the key components related to the budget of the government which really help to enhance your knowledge and academic value kindly share comment and subscribe our channel ebc for such informative videos in future